Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, related rates practice problem video. Uh, in this one, we'll be tracking another slightly different variant of related rates problems that you might see out there. Um, so let's dive right into it. So a tank begins its patrol shift exactly 10 feet in front of an outpost, right? And it begins moving to the right at a constant rate of 4 feet per second. Constant rate, right? Let's keep that in mind. Uh, at the same time, a patrol tower stationed, there's a patrol stationed at the outpost and she's observing this tank with her, uh, she's observing this tank. And while she's doing this, she rotates her spotlight to keep it in sight, right? Um, and the question we're being asked here is how fast is the patrol rotating her spotlight after 10 seconds have passed, right? So seems like a lot, but let's start to just put this sort of into a more understandable form in our general picture, right? In our general picture. And remember, the general picture contains information that's true at any given instant of time, right? So let's, let's um, put all that stuff in. So we start here uh, at our outpost, right? right. Uh, we start at the outpost and we have our tank here. Uh, let's see how well I can draw this tank. Right. We have a tank and this tank is moving to the right uh, so what are some variables I could put in here? And again, I like to start these general pictures with variables, and then I like to put in numbers just because that kind of helps uh, when I have to write equations later down in the road. Right? So we know this distance. Uh, uh, let's see if I can draw this in. We know this distance. right? Let's call that y. Right? And we also know this distance. That is the distance between where the starting point is and this tank here, or in other words, how far the tank has moved. Let's call that x, right? So we've got our variables up there. Let's see if we can put down some things that we know now that are true at any instant of time. Let's put in some numbers that are true at any instant of time. Well, I know that y is a constant 10 feet, right? That y distance doesn't change because the tank is, again, only moving to the right. Likewise, I know how fast the tank is moving, right? I know that this constant rate, right, this rate is, I know that I have a constant rate of four feet per second. And since I know it's, I'm given it's a constant rate, I don't have to worry about it changing uh, at later points of time. So I can just say that dx dt, right, is going to be four feet per second. Now, is that going to be a positive four or a negative four? Take a second and think about that. Well, I, it's actually going to be a positive four, but here's why. Notice that the way we've defined x, x is the distance between the tank and the starting point, right? And as time goes on, the tank is moving away from the starting point, right? So that distance x that we've defined is getting bigger and bigger, right? So this, this value of x that we've defined is only going to get bigger and bigger as the tank keeps moving along this arrow here, right? So that's why this is defined to be a positive number. That's a common mistake I see a lot, so just wanted to make sure we, we really have that down, okay? The next thing we want is, again, we're interested in how fast the patrol is rotating her spotlight, right? Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can sketch in that um, rotation component here. Well, if the patrol is standing at the outpost, then this angle here between, let's see if I can draw that properly, yeah, this angle here is also going to be very important, right? Because as, as time is moving on, she's rotating her, her uh, spotlight like this, and that angle is changing. So this angle here is what we're really interested in, okay? So that's our general picture. Now let's go right in here and create our specific picture, our, our, our um, quote-unquote uh, snapshot picture, right? At one specific instant of time. And remember, we're creating the snapshot picture at this time of interest, which is going to be t equals 10 seconds. Okay, so at 10 seconds, we are plugging in everything that's true at this particular instant, right? And again, the important distinction I want to make here is that stuff that's in this picture, in the snapshot picture, is not necessarily true at any other point of time. It's just true at this particular instant of time. So let's make sure we uh, don't forget that. Right? So once again, we'll still have our outpost. Right? 
We'll still have the tank. It's going to be some distance. We know. It's not a great tank, but oh well. Uh, it's still moving down this way. So we still know that dx dt is still going to be 4 feet per second. Yeah. Um, we also know this distance y is not changing. Right? This y is not changing, and that's still going to be 10 feet. However, what about this quantity x here? What about this guy here? That's something we do know now, right? Because if you think about it, we know how much time has passed, right? We know this time interval, we know the rate, so we can actually figure out what x is. So I could come down here and say, all right, so x is going to be, well, maybe let's come down here, just give ourselves some more, some more space there. So x is going to be, we have our rate, of four feet per second, times 10 seconds. So this is actually just gonna be a big 40 feet. Right. So at specific time, x is gonna be 40 feet. Yeah. And of course, we still have our angle in there. Right. So yeah, let's just keep it like that. So we still have this angle theta here. Right. Great, so we have that all in there now. And we, there's no other information we really have in the problem it's given to us. So we can just go, we can just uh, stop there with our pictures. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is let's go ahead and list out our goal, right? In other words, what quantity do we want to solve for? Uh, and our goal is that we want to find d theta dt. Right? We want to find d theta dt. In other words, we want to find how fast this angle is turning uh, at the specific moment t, at, at so the specific instant t is equal to 10, right? So we want to find how fast that angle is changing at this specific point of time. That's, what's, that's what we're looking for. All right, so we've got that in place. So now we can go ahead and set up an equation of interest. We can go ahead and set up an equation of interest. So let's, and again, for equations, I always like to look at my general picture. Right, because the general picture again it makes sure it makes sure that I don't um, I don't accidentally oversimplify my problem. Right, so that's why I like to look at the general picture. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything in here that I can use for an equation. So I want to find theta as a function of other things. Right, so when dealing with angles, it's always best to think about some kind of trigonometry. Right, so in this case, what what's a trig function that would work very nicely for me? Well, I do understand. I know a lot more about x and y here than I do about this third side here. So I want to, I'm want going to use a trig function that just relates to these two things. Well, I like tangent, right? So if we come down here, I can say tangent of theta, right, is going to equal opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be x over y, right? And I can even uh, take this one step further and say that I know y is equal to 10, so I can just say this is just going to be x over 10. Phenomenal, right? I've got all, all my major pieces in place now. And now I can go ahead and take my derivative, right? So we're going to, this is where we kind of make things move. And we're going to do our derivative with respect to time. Right? And we're going to have to use some implicit differentiation here. Right? So let's look at this left-hand side first. Well, the derivative with respect to, what's the derivative of tangent theta? Well, it's going to be secant squared theta, right? So we have secant squared theta. And now here pops out the thing we're really interested in, which is going to be our dx dt, or d, sorry, excuse, excuse me, my d, or our, our d theta dt, right? So that's our d theta dt, which is what we're ultimately interested in. And on the right-hand side, we will have 1 over 10, times derivative of x over here is going to be uh, dx dt. So we have the 1 over 10, which is the derivative of just this thing by itself. And then we have the, x, the dx dt that uh, comes in there. Sweet. So we have, all, so we have uh, pretty much all our major. So excellent. Now let's take a second 
and very quickly figure out what we know and what we don't know so we can go ahead and have a game plan for what we're trying to what we can what we need to do next right so dxct i know right because if i come back up here i remember that dxct is four feet so that's something i know d theta dt is not d, d theta dt i don't really know but that's also not a problem because that's what i'm solving for so that's okay however the secant squared theta is something that i don't actually know right so we're gonna have we're gonna have to go back up here to our snapshot picture this time and see if we can find what that might be okay all right so now there's two different approaches we can take here so the first one is i can say okay um let's do that in, in green Right, so I can say that, okay, I know that secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. So if I can find cosine theta from this triangle, I can figure out what secant theta is going to be. Right? So what you would need to do is you need to solve for the length of this leg, and then you could find what cosine theta is, and then you could plug in. There's a slightly easier way I'm going to show you. Right? We can remember a trig identity. Right? We can remember that secant, theta, secant squared theta is simply 1 plus tangent squared theta. Okay? Why is this so helpful to us? Well, tangent is something that I, I don't need to solve for any extra sides to figure out. Right? Because tangent theta is just going to be opposite over adjacent, and I already know what both those sides are. So I don't actually have to solve for this third side here, so I can just go ahead and I can save myself an extra step of work there. Okay, that's basically what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to use this identity and figure out what tangent squared theta is, and if I can figure out this, I, I already know what secant squared theta is, and my work is done. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so what we could do is we could come back over here, right? So we could look at our triangle and recognize that the tangent of theta is equal to, uh, it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So opposite, remember, is 40 feet. Adjacent is 10 feet. So x is 10, 40, y is 10. So we have 40 over 10, which is just going to be 4. Okay. So let's plug that in over here for tangent squared theta. So secant squared theta is going to be 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is going to be 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 1 is going to give me 17. Okay. What if you didn't remember this identity? Well, you could always go back up here, use Pythagorean theorem, solve for the length of this, this green side over here, and you could or solve for the length of the circled side over here, and then you would get an answer for cosine theta, which you could then use to get secant theta. A little bit more work, which is why I like um, this method a little bit better. Right? But you will get the same number. So we've got that covered. So now let's put this guy in here for secant theta and go ahead and wrap up our problem. So we will now have 17 times d theta over dt. We already know dx dt is 4, so we can just say over 4 over 10. right? Now we just divide both sides by 70, and we end up with d theta dt is just going to equal 4 over 170. What's my units for this? It's going to be radians per second. Okay, Why radians per second? That's just, that's just the general unit we always use for angular velocity. Right? Now let's do a quick spot check. Let's come back up here. Uh, so first thing let's notice, this answer is positive. So this number is a positive number. Let's see if that makes sense with what we've got up here. Right? So the tank is moving this way. Right? The tank is moving this way. So naturally, this angle is going to get bigger. Right? Over time, this angle is going to just keep getting bigger. So yeah, it does make sense that our answer is going to be positive. So we've done a quick spot check. So yeah, that answer definitely does make sense. Right? So yeah, that's basically it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!